This is a very special edition of Coffee with Keisha. It's the Christmas edition. And I don't know about you, but I absolutely love Christmas. Especially this year, I think there is no time too early to bring in the Christmas spirit. If Christmas isn't a great time for you, let me know. You can always come over to our place. There's always leftover ham. Today, I'm talking with water polo alumni entrepreneurs, three incredibly talented guests, each with their own businesses. First up, we have Maddie Steer. She's a Victorian, a current Aussie stinger, and owner of Maddie Handmade Crafts. Next up, another Victorian, Matt Grono, former Aussie shark and the guy behind Gronsky Photography. All the way from WA, we have former goalkeeper for the national teams of Yugoslavia and Australia, plus the former head coach of Waste, Thomas Lazic. He's the author of a brand new book, The Love of Goalkeeping, Many Sports, One Love. All three are Water Polo Australia alumni. All three are entrepreneurs and fancy that, all three sell products that will go very nicely under your Christmas tree. Coffee with Keisha, not known for subtlety, plan to unashamedly promote them, encourage you to support them and explore the life of an entrepreneur. You'll find links to their website in the show notes. Now let's get on with the show. So in a nutshell, each tell us about your business. Let's start with Maddie. Okay, well, so Maddie Handmade is obviously a whole heap of handmade items and mainly it is yeah, cheese yeah. boards and cheese knives with resin on them. Um, and I started it probably this time last year, right before the stingers were moving to Canberra because I knew I wanted something that was a bit different, like obviously just really different from water polo, distracting in our downtime. We were moving to Canberra, we didn't know anyone else. So in the times between sessions, I wanted something to be able to focus on. So that was kind of the idea of starting it. And also because I just love making things like how many cheese boards can like one person make for themselves. So it had to be something that I could sell just purely to fund the idea of being able to make more stuff. Um, and every time I ever bought anything, I was like, this is silly. Like no one's going to buy it. I'm going to end up with like, all this extra stuff. Um, but now like it's actually taken off and people are interested in like people I don't know. So it's like not even friends anymore. It's like growing so much. So I, still find it weird like for you to say hey like you're a business owner and like an entrepreneur because I don't think of myself that way at all like this is just a hobby that's sort of taken off um but you know I'm so glad that it's something so different from water polo that I can put time and energy into use as a distraction use as an outlet um and you know make something that's going to make someone else happy awesome and Matt what about you Oh, similar to, to Maddie, I guess. It's a passion and a hobby that's turned into an ABN. So, um, you know, I've, not many people know, but I've, I've always had a, a passion for photography ever since I was young. Um, but sorry, to describe my business, I'm a photographer, but predominantly aerial photography um, and just try to mix it up around that. So around the coast, um, I am exploring... Yeah you know, country Victoria, country Australia. So trying to add diversity to my uh, photographs where I can. But um, yeah, it started out as just a, a passion of mine when I was younger and then always kept it to myself. But it came out after um, I deleted, wanted to delete social media and Instagram and um, for personal reasons and then found out that I really missed that creative outlet. So um, it forced me to put out my photography and from there I got a bit of a following and a lot of interest and that motivated me to put out more and more so I'm really glad I did it. Awesome and lastly Thomas what about you? Well mine was uh, is actually a book that has been about two year and a half in a writing but about 20 or 30 years in the making uh, the book is actually called The Love of Goalkeeping Many Sports One Love and it actually basically tries to answer one question what is common to goalkeepers across all sports and at first it sounds really strange question like why would we not do that but then when you look at it you realize how many similarities actually we share across different sports and the way it actually came about is after my active water polo career what i had before actually i had studied handball goals and futsal goals and i rekindled after many many years of swirling in my head so it's um Put my head down for about a year and a half, did a lot of research, talking to people to about over 100 people from different sports and genders and countries and um, 
expertise levels and yeah, came up with this book that's really kind of labor of love um, for, for and passion for goalkeeping, whatever the sport. So you, Thomas, you say that it's about not just water polo. So you like researched a lot of different sports. Um, what was yeah. the thing that surprised you, you know, when, when you were looking outside of water polo when writing this book? From geo to then mental pressures, dealing with that, um, to kind of the, the presence in goals, the, the ways of development. Uh, there's so many similarities um, that it, it kind of really struck me um, how similar we are. Now, because we're so similar, uh, kind of my argument is we, it's a great way to actually look out of the style of your own sport and actually learn because it just might give you kind of that next competitive edge, if you like. Um, and also it makes people a little bit more comfortable to talk about and share experiences and, 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 and uh, stories outside of their own and, and sort of new edge developments outside of their sport because that within their own sports, some, they, sometimes they feel embarrassed or they think they need to know everything. Whereas if you share across the sports, what I'm finding is your elite soccer goalkeeping coach would, would listen intently to a junior water polo coach because oh, they're hearing something new for the first time or vice versa. Mm. Yeah, interesting. And Maddie and Matt, you've both taken mm. on more creative avenues. Um, I suppose, you know, people don't normally put sport and art or creativity together. Were people surprised when, you know, you came out with, with this small business? And um, do you see any parallels between sport and, and your small business? Even though, Maddie, I know you said it was, you know, basically done to be completely opposite, but can you draw any parallels at all? I think, um, I don't know if people are necessarily surprised. Like, my whole family is really creative. Um, and even when I'm making things, dad's over my shoulder, like, well, what if you do one to make it look like a pool? And what if you do this? And what if you do that? So I think, um, and anyone who knows me and my family is not too surprised by the creative side. But if you didn't, I know like water polo is so, you know, following the rules, there's so many strict things that you have to do um, training wise. And then like I'm studying science. So everything's very factual, very like, you know, it's, it's right or it's wrong. Um, but I think in the parallels it is quite similar in the sense that in a water polo game everything's changing and you have to be a little creative to some of the best players you know make you know nothing out of something something out of nothing and so just being able to have that side of my brain you know training it in a way like in a way that you're like learning how to think creatively which i'm hopeful will, will translate into that aspect of the game but like i said it is something that just when I'm done studying, when I'm done watching game film or something, it's something that I can switch to the other side of my brain and give myself a bit of a break. So I think there's like a nice balance of, of both of those aspects. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a bit different. People were surprised because like I mentioned earlier, I kept it to myself. It was more of a, uh, a, a personal passion of mine. So I don't think um, many of my close network took it too seriously when I released it. They might've thought that it was a fad or that I was just doing something new, but as it um, progressed and um, started to get interest and, you know, people purchasing some of my prints, like, okay, okay. He's, um, he's serious about it. So that, that was good. But um, parallels, I a little bit, I think general sporting parallels as a, as an athlete. So it's finding that, you know, the, the times where you, where you get a weekend off or, or something like that to do that extra work. So it could be working on your website or, or um, it could be, you know, maybe going out, getting up early to take photos. It's, it's actually getting that, that motivation to do it. And, and when, when, you know, some people would just take a weekend to relax, it's uh, just getting that organization together to, and that like motivation I said to get up early and, and to do that extra bit of work, even though, you know, deep down you, you probably just want to relax so like with water polo it could be you know maybe doing an extra swim set or doing that extra leg session after a workout or you know doing wrist curls in the gym to work on you know extra <laughs> strength on your shot so little things like that and i guess your photos are often of, of the water so that's you know that's a great parallel. Yep, didn't, didn't pick that one up. Um, of, of the water. Not many, but you know, I liked your answer. Better. I might, I might get some pools in there, but um, not many pool shots at the moment. It's all ocean and uh, yeah. yeah. 
Um, cool. So I guess Matt's kind of drawn us into the next question. The skills that you've learned as an athlete and how you're using them, not necessarily in the creative outlet of your small business or the research, but on the, you know, the, the other aspects of a small business, you know, taking on so many different hats, you know, having that motivation to, to do things when, you know, no one's telling you to. How do you think an, being an athlete has helped you, you know, be successful in, that, in that, those kind of areas? We'll start with uh, Thomas. Uh, yeah, I think we have a distinctive advantage uh, there as athletes, um, especially in a tough sport like water polo, because persistence really is the key in water polo. Um, and not panicking at, at first. I mean, admittedly, my initial goal was not to, and <laughs> still isn't to, you know, set the world alight. But there's so many times, just like in a game of water polo, there's crucial moments that you kind of go, okay, what do I do here now? Um, and learning, trying new things, um, as you pointed out, you know, the business side of it, the promotional side of it, I'm completely new to that. Okay, I enjoyed writing the book, but it's a challenge. And as a water polo player, um, you figure it out, you know, especially as a goalkeeper, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Any, anyone else? Yeah, I think for me, um, it was like the ability to take the risk and the ability to go and just do something that I'm passionate about. Like how Matt said, you know, some people might have been skeptical or, um, you know, not sure if it was really going to work out. And I'm thinking like, am I going to buy 20 cheese boards? Like I love cheese, but I mean, how many cheese boards can you really have in your house? So if people didn't buy it, like that's a huge waste of money and a huge waste of all these resources. So I think like the ability to just go and do it and to know that that's something that I'm interested in and, you know, it might not be the most like common path, but you know, with water polo, you just do it and people might think you're crazy and people might think like, I can't believe I would never do that myself. Yeah. Um, which half the time, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but you know, it gives you that confidence to be able to go out and do something because you know you're passionate about it and you know you want, you want that for yourself. And like being able to take that risk is something I think that from water polo, I definitely was able to take that away. Yeah, I think um, playing at that higher level you know, that professional standard, just knowing that you're not going to get immediate, immediate success and immediate gain straight away. So um, those just, yeah, just that awareness of just keep putting out, putting that small work and eventually it'll start progressing and it'll start to come. So um, that's what I found. So what I've taken away is that, you know, not to be deterred by maybe not getting the recognition early, but if you just keep persisting, um, it'll eventually come. Mm -hmm. That's actually mm -hmm. a really good point. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of people think with your own business, you know, you don't have a boss, you have no one to answer to. It's, you know, a great life. But as you've all just said, there's, it's not just roses and there's lots of obstacles to overcome. So, you know, that's, you know, a cool side to, to, for everyone to hear about. Now, I guess for all of you, is this like a side, a side hustle or do you have something else that you do on top of this? Um, and if so, what is that? So Maddie, obviously you're a current Aussie singer. So we'll start with you. So you are training and what else do you yep. have? Yep. Still training. Obviously it's been a bit weird with COVID and the whole situation, but, um, still training, studying, and I want to go into the pharmaceutical industry. So I'm currently doing my master's in pharmaceutical medicine. Um, I have no idea what area of the pharmaceutical industry. I really just have no clue, but this is, is definitely like a side hustle that is more about I love making something and like I said it's it funds my really all the things that I need to buy it so it's um something that I never really thought would take off and like I'm not expecting to ever fund my life and be my full-time job like that's not why I did it um but definitely something that I would want to continue and I still want to grow and still have you know more customers and more things to make but um I don't think it's something I ever want to be you know, a huge business and my full-time job or anything like that. But uh, yeah. I, I touched on earlier, but I'm in, yeah, I currently work in marketing. Um, so I, I'm lucky that I've still got that creative side in my current job, but um, yeah, Keisha and Maddie, as I touched on that, I think, and as we talked about just a couple of moments, moments ago, I'm um, making that next step to take that little bit of a bigger risk and pursue this passion a little more so um there's some developments that i can't mention um, right now but um Lucy. It has, it has, 
But um, no, I do a lot of uh, videography as well. So video and um, that type of thing. So it will involve that as well as photography. Awesome. All right, cool. And Thomas, what about you? Uh, well, look, uh, I, I, I do have a daytime job. Uh, and I'm sticking to that one. Um, I've actually been, I'm, I'm a teacher of about 20 years, but I've been working as a teaching and learning coach. I look after the um, uh, first, second year graduates in the public education system here in WA. Uh, so it's a really fantastic job and I really enjoy it. Um, I guess looking at all of your business pages or Instagrams, you all have some really great feedback and testimonials. And I guess, you know, when, you know, the average consumer, I guess for them to understand what does a testimonial mean to a small business? Do you think it's something that everyone should be doing or does it not really matter so much? I found that it's definitely huge because um, especially like if you can take the time to do something like that, even if it's liking Instagram photos, commenting, like sharing it on your story, like I don't expect all my friends to go out and buy a board. Like I know that's unrealistic to expect of people, but if you share a story, if you write a good review, if you do buy one, like all those really small free things that you can do to support, whether it's your friend's small business or a small business you bought something from, you might not even know them. It's actually so huge because it's this little tiny like reminder that people like what I'm doing, people are enjoying it. And it's just that support that you can get from people, like especially your friends, especially the people that like see it all the time. Um, you know, a small little piece of support that they don't have to pay for anything. It's, it's really easy, it's really quick. And I think people don't quite realize like how important that really is, um, especially for small businesses. While there's, you know, a lot of competition out there, a lot of people out there doing similar stuff. So just, you know, spreading the word almost is like so, so valuable. And I think, you know, it's really easy if you know how valuable it is to someone, but it's one of those things that people forget about all the time because it seems so small, it seems so irrelevant. But I found, I'm not sure about you guys, but I found that stuff so helpful. Yeah, with social media, my, my, obviously testimonials, engagement is all social media. So um, it's the key to getting repeat business. It's, it's the key to get a following. So yeah, you rely on it and, and it sucks at times because you, I almost seek um, validation off the shots, whether they're good or bad based on the number of comments and likes that I get. So sometimes you'll post something and you think, oh, this is amazing, best ever. And it's like, doesn't get much engagement. And then the ones you're like, oh, I'll put this up because I like this aspect about yeah. it, but you know, it's not, not in my top five or whatever. And it's, it blows up. And people are like, oh, can I get this? And you're like, oh, it's impossible. So it's really important because it, it just keeps you, or oh, keeps me in check. So, um, and to remind me that it's not, the, it's not necessarily what I like, other people are gonna like. So it's really important to get that feedback. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, look, and for me, everything that Maddie and Matt, I kept nodding throughout what they were saying, absolutely spot on. The little things uh, make a huge difference. And I've noticed how now since I've got the book out, I've become a, a lot more active in actually trying to, uh, for example, some of the friends do a similar thing and that sort of thing. And I realized how much that actually means. And as Maddie said, I don't expect anyone to buy my book or cheese board or whatever it is, but even little acts of support actually do mean a lot because it is kind of us out there. We, you, with, a, with any sort of product or business, you do put yourself out there. Now, it's, yeah, sure, as Maddie said, it's a, it's a bit of validation that you get, you know, little, you, get, you get from the likes. But more than that, it's actually, it's, it's, it's an encouragement to, to keep going and um, to see it as, as my uh, person who helped me to publish the, the book. She said, Don't, it, it, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So just stick with it and you'll see, you watch people pick it up, share it. And it's so, so that kind of, it was quite a reassuring to hear. All right, guys, it's time for rapid fire. So we have three questions and just say the first thing that you think of. Okay, okay. so number one, what is your coffee order? Nothing, I hate coffee. <laughs> me, it's, for me, it's a strong latte or in New South Wales, a double shot latte is what you guys call it. <laughs> Uh, 
long neck. Cool. Okay, number two. What is your go-to karaoke song? The one you're going to belt out no matter where you are, no matter who's listening. Bohemia Rhapsody, have done it. Thank you. <laughs> ah, long one. Need, need, need lots of beers for that one. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, we'll go current, uh, Miley Cyrus party in the USA. Oh, no. Well, I cannot sing, so you will never see me doing karaoke. But mine is um, The Reason by Hoobastank. I actually don't even know how to say their name. <laughs> Always on our sing style when we were younger. Hey, I'm going to get that out of you after a while. We'll never. <laughs> okay, number three and the last one. In the movie of your life, what celebrity would play you? Um, I would say Jennifer Lawrence only because I know she at one point had a short frizzy hairstyle and I feel like we really relate on that one. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm a bit indifferent on this one, but people have said Hugh Grant. So Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. People, people reckon I look like Hugh Grant. I don't get it. I've, I've had five older ladies come up to me separate over the years and said you're a dead I see it actually like I wouldn't pick it but like now that you said it but Hugh Grant always plays a like really like kind of pathetic character I don't think it's All Tisha, I, don't, tell you something. Tisha, I don't think it's on personality I think it's <laughs> <laughs> okay and lucky last Thomas what about you uh Nicholas Gage, because I've actually been told I've been confused as Nicholas. I mean, we look alike apparently. Yeah, that one, I don't mind that one. That's so, okay. yeah, there you go. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, that is a wrap. Um, again, everyone, Thanks. the links for these guys, uh, companies and business Instagram pages are in the show notes. Please go and support them and, you know, give someone a really happy Christmas as well as these guys a good Christmas by supporting their businesses. Merry Christmas! <laughs> <laughs>